Guys, Rockets coach Mike D'Antoni had an amazing quote last night. He was asked why he didn't double Brooke Lopez, considering some of the points Lopez was scoring. And Mike said, nah, those are just twos. They don't hurt us. I mean, look, Trace, Rockets are 18 and 7, second Seven in the games. league in scoring. Does D'Antoni have a point? He does, because this is his style. That's what those guys try to do. They're out, they're going to outshoot you. They're going to shoot 33s and right. 30. 40. <laughs> well, well, 40 threes. That's, that's just his, his philosophy. That's what they do. You know, he likes to be simple and funny with the press. I mean, he's actually not really wrong because if the, if I watched the game. They're like they're, These are kind of tough floaters, hook shots in the lane. Like You'll live with that. Yeah, trade you over two for threes. Yeah, over okay. doubling a good passer in the post and giving up free. Now, if you guys walk into the rim like DeMarcus Cousins and laying it up, you got to do something. But if it's hooks, you know. Yeah, just don't try that philosophy against Golden State because it well, will that's, not that's the work. Thing. The math problem works until it doesn't work, right? Yeah, I mean, sure. and the philosophy of like go all offense and only kind of worry about the defense hey, works until it doesn't work. They're doing it right. Right now, though. Well, I mean, the regular season, there's a thing to be said for winning the regular season and the games you can win and putting yourself in at least a good seating position for the right. playoffs you and gotta, maybe buckling down with your style. you got to play 28 more. other teams before you play the Warriors. I right. mean, you know, there's the Warriors and there's everyone else. you got to figure it out. Cleveland might feel a little bit differently about they are. That. They are an unbelievable shooting team. They are. <laughs> All right, that is our buzzer for make or miss. So let's move on to make handles. Speaking of the Rockets, James Harden put this crossover on mm. Trevor Booker That's last mean. night. That's Best mean. one-on-one player mean. in the game. Right? I felt sorry for uh, Trevor on that one. That's the toughest cover in the league right now, it right? It really is. I think one-on-one it is in terms of those herky-jerky kind of moves. Yeah, him and Kyrie the best in the league. Oh, one-on-one. that's a good one, yep. Kyrie. There you go. Miss Tempers, DeAndre Jordan and Evan Turner, they were both ejected after this last night. I'm not sure why. Trace, what do you think? This league has become shiny. <laughs> <laughs> so soft. That's what it they is. Just, so right, it was like you're ejected for pointing. I mean, there's like I a mean, little. Come on, man. It's just pointing. a lot of punting going on. And right? You get ejected for that. They get fined for this. Two thousand bucks. They get fined. That's, on, that's, that's what I was talking bitch. about, Adam. <laughs> come on. Bad. All right, make bounce. Derek Jones had this left-handed throwdown in the D League last night. Ooh. I'd like to see a D League player in you know, the dunk contest. You know what I would love to see? Yes, but I would love to have a D League dunk contest, and then a winner out of that gets to gets to, to dunk make in it. The, yes. To the dunk contest. Absolutely. That would be good. As long dope. as Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon are in the dunk contest again, I don't care what they're doing. Why did he just insult good. Aaron Gordon? I didn't insult him. You don't, have to, shoot him jump. Jump. You don't have to shoot jumpers. You don't have to shoot jumpers. You don't have to shoot jumpers in the dunk contest. You can just dunk. <laughs> Is all. it insulting if I want somebody to better themselves? I want him to develop a jumper. Well, he should come work with you. He should. I this is not reached, you know. I, okay. I told him on his show. Right. Zach, I'm say, telling you. I'll work I'm, with you. Exactly. I want to get to Zach insulting me. The great Candace Parker is in the studio today, and you know, you said you could be on her Snapchat, but not mine. Yeah, she's Candace Parker. <laughs> she's a champion at multiple levels. Win something and then come back to me. Possibly a fair point. Make resourcefulness. <laughs> Speaking of the D-League and dunks. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh. Yeah. Tossed an alley oop to himself hey, off the glass. Guy. Hey, I'm just happy I, I influenced somebody. I haven't seen this yet. That's pretty good. That's Great. All. I'm, I'm, I'm just thankful that uh-huh. I influenced somebody. You uh-huh. Know? Uh-huh. Look at that, Tracy. Yeah. Oh, oh, that old See, video I, I, warms my heart. I influenced him. Boom. Just creativity. That's creativity. Yeah. Off the glass, you're in trouble. <laughs> up and under. Oh, that's a good Let's get Look it. Back with us because we are going to try to stay on this show longer than Luke Walton made it into the Lakers-Kings <laughs> game last night. Yep. Walton ejected just eight minutes into the festivities. Take a look. Four three. Did you see the non-call? We got a technical on Luke Walton. He is close to being tossed. Yeah. They got to get him out of the official's yeah. way here. He might get tossed. DeMarcus wrapped up Julius and then he's out. He's down. Gone. Luke. Luke Walton, a lot of opinions on the referee's mother there. And by the way, I love how he takes off his jacket, right, as he leaves the court. How awesome is that? Now, here is why Walton was upset. Boogie Cousins tangles up Julius Randle, doesn't get called for it. It's not that I mean... Yeah, mm. well, when you on a seven-game losing, <laughs> losing streak, streak. Yeah. right? And these things get you upset. These two players, they also went at it the last time these teams met. So Randle said the fact that Walton stood up for him this time meant a tremendous amount to him. Of course, it didn't mean enough that the Lakers actually won this basketball game. In fact, they got outscored 39 to 13 in the third quarter. 39 to 13. I mean, that is hard to do against anyone. It is really hard to do against the Kings. Sacramento even trolled LA on Twitter last night. 
yeah, that's not harsh or anything. Mm. And afterward, Walton said, quote, I felt like for the first time this season, we gave in. We gave up, which is disheartening because our group has been very resilient all year long. Look, this was the Lakers' seventh straight loss, which wouldn't be surprising for last year's Lakers, who only won 17 games total. But it is surprising for this year's Lakers, who showed us in the first month of the season how good they really could be. Heck, at one point, D'Angelo Russell and Nick Young were even talking about how they could be a playoff team. We started to expect more from them. They started to expect more from themselves, which in turn feels like that might be the problem. When things started to fall apart, instead of treating it like an inevitable bump in the road for a young team, some of the Lakers have been acting like the sky is falling. They've been disconnected, easily frustrated, or as we saw last night, sometimes just giving up entirely. Now, do I think Luke Walton can fix this? Yeah, the Lakers are on a road trip at the perfect time. Being forced to be together, to face each other, that's the best medicine for a losing streak. But it is something that needs fixing. Part of being a young team is learning how to handle losing so it doesn't snowball. And the Lakers clearly aren't there yet. Guys, I mean, what do you think? Tracy, are the Lakers who we thought they were at the beginning of the season or are they who you thought they were all along? <laughs> no, um, this I think what happened was D'Angelo Russell went out. In the beginning of the season, you had your whole team. You had They were healthy. You, you found some chemistry within your group. Um, D'Angelo Russell missed a significant amount of time, and you kind of lost that. Like, you, you didn't have that rhythm. You had to replace him with other guys, and that same rhythm and the chemistry was just broken. Um, now, they lost a lot of steam here lately. They got to find some way to get that back because I still believe they are that team that can be exciting, um, be in games, and, and compete every night. They don't have that right now. Again, we don't want that to snowball, have a snowball effect of what's going on right now. You hit it on the head, you know, you said they're a young team, they're learning to lose, they're learning to deal with adversity, that's all normal, like mm-hmm. the 10 and 10 start brainwashed everyone to think, <laughs> it's a playoff team, they're way ahead of schedule, like they hit a bump Calm in the road, down. they had a couple of injuries, like they were horrible on defense then, they're horrible on defense now, <laughs> let's, all, really bad on defense. let's all just yeah. relax, the Lakers are going to be fine, Julius Randle's in a little slump, he'll uptick, you know, the free agent signings haven't really worked out, that's a bigger issue, but like, they're fine, they're fine, they're a young team finding their way. It, it might help if their coach could stay in the game a little bit longer. I think Luke, even though he was glad he made the point, he might agree with that. But it wasn't just him with the text. Los Angeles actually picked up six texts total last night, which leads to our favorite soap opera. As the game turns. Oh, buddy. It's a daily show. It's a daily show. I don't make it a daily show. The Sacramento Kings make it a daily show because Boogie Cousins also picked up a tech of his own. This is for trash talking Brian Shaw in front of one of the officials. And, and look, afterward, Boogie said he thought it was an overreaction. A little soap opera, maybe uh, overreaction from the official. Right he did get an attack. He thinks that he is getting unfairly targeted. Quote, it's been a while since I've just went up to a ref and cursed him out, which apparently he thinks. Hey, Boogie. Um, so I really don't know what to do. I see how some guys talk to the refs, and it's okay. And then there's me. It just depends on their mood. So, Tracy, He's learning, this latest guys. episode of As Sacramento Turns, yeah. this, how do you feel? Well, how I feel is this is Boogie's history catching up to him. You know, uh, how he's treated refs in the, in the past, showing them up. They don't. They never forget that. So when, it, Rasheed Wallace, so when an event occurs like it did last night, it's always going to catch up to you. Boogie <laughs> calls a lot of this on himself. Now he seems like he's learning from it. You know, he said he's having he went up to a, a ref and like, cursed. Actually, yeah. cursed them. You so me a little work. Hey, right? he's learning. Brownie, cupcake. Yeah. Are there any other plot plot elements in this soap opera, or is it just the same now, one over me, and over again? Now, let's stay in the same season, game, baby. because I got, I got a bunch of them. The, the call that was on Randall, Boogie should have been called for a foul on that. Let's right. just be honest, and right. you know, they let him get away with that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, I do have to point out, this was his ninth tech of the season. That puts him on pace for 28 yeah. techs this Go season. for it. Go for 30. We know, of course, she got many more than that back in the day, but back then, there wasn't the penalty right. the league has now. Now... Once you hit 16, you get suspended, and then you start getting suspended for every other tech after that. So if he actually did stay on pace, this 28 tech a season pace, you're talking about one of the teams in the NBA losing its inarguably best player 
for so many games, that can't happen. It can't, it can't continue well, this way. It, Something's got to give. It's not going to continue that way. He'll get up to 14, 15, and then he'll calm down a little bit, and he'll <laughs> say, look, I can do it. See, I can do See, it. And I we'll have didn't this, curse and, anyone And then out. we'll have the same plot element again on mm-hmm. as Sacramento Returns, Returns or whatever exactly. it's called. Bring the music back. No, no, no. Just kidding. All right. Well, there may be more reps on the court to give Boogie, Boogie those texts. You haven't factor that into your equation, Zach Lowe. The NBA is going to experiment in that direction, starting in the D-League, where a handful of games will feature four- and five-person crews instead of the usual three. The league says this is in an effort to, quote, collect data on how this would work. (laughs) Come on, man. (laughs) What's next, yo? This is... This is... Please tell me you're not right with Look, that. I'm fine. I, it's the D League. Try yeah. anything. Try 12 foot hoops. Try yeah. six D-league, six. Yeah. I don't care. D League, I don't care. You can implement four, yeah, four right. pointers and five pointers in the D League. 40 minute games. Don't whatever. bring this into our game. This, the, the court is already crowded with three rest and the 10 players out there. Come on, man. There's some feeling that things would get called more correctly in that way. Players would what be What the hell we got instant replay for? <laughs> well, but here's the thing. Here's the, I agree with you. I don't know where these guys are going to stand. They're going to have different alignments. It's going to get crowded. But you can't, the instant replay, like, all that stuff is next day stuff, like the flopping funds. Oh, next day, the technical that's upgraded to a flagrant two, whatever. That's next day. They need in-game stuff, in-game penalties, instant penalties. I don't know what the numbers are, whether whether calls from officials are up or down this year. I will only say that from a feel eye test point, when you watch games, it feels like a lot of games are getting interrupted, that there isn't as much flow as you would like them to be. It is difficult to think of when adding another official is somehow going to improve that. But, you know, you do want Over accuracy. officiating So, I don't, I don't know. Doc, I was at the Clippers game. You were at the Clippers game last night. You remember Doc Rivers said prior to the game, someone asked him about this. He goes, I liked it better when there were only two officials. I got away with a lot more. So, <laughs> I think some guys would like yeah. to see us As move back player, in that direction. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move on to a game that's coming up tonight. Timberwolves Bulls. And you can see that right here on ESPN. It's got juice, baby. This is Coach Tom Thibodeau's return to face the team that fired him. But it's not exactly going to be a triumphant stroll through the doors now, is it? Despite having a roster stacked with young talent, Carl Anthony Towns, Andrew Wiggins, the Wolves are on a three-team tie for the worst record in the league at 6-18. And, and Zach, look, when the beginning they were having trouble at the start of the season, we were all like, hey, it's takes time to gel and they're young. Is there a point where past the quarter mark they are oh, underachieving? We're past it. The, we're past the, it Zach. has to take some I, responsibility. I, I think, look, I think they're underachieving, right? But I, the expectations were wildly out of control. Their three top minutes guys are 21 years old. Like, you just don't win in the NBA with teams like this. Their bench stinks. We all knew their bench would stink. I will say, though, I do think it's disappointing. Like, Carl Anthony Towns has not been any strides on defense. He might have even slid back. Like, I mean, he it, has a coach that's supposed to be an expert in it, that. It, is it the coach's responsibility to connect more? It is the coach's responsibility because when Tibbs were, was in Chicago, that was the Bulls' identity. They were a tough defensive team. Uh, now, he has the personnel to be that type of team with this these guys. The message is just not getting through with them for whatever reason. Something has to change. The, the message has to change. The philosophy has to change because it's not getting through to these guys. Brian Winhorst was saying that he's been hearing that now the Wolves are looking for more front court help. Have you, have you been hearing that they're talking about roster adjustments or that they just have to basically get, yeah. get it together within? I mean, they signed a bunch of front court players. Some of them don't even play. Like, Jordan Hill doesn't play. Cole Aldridge sometimes doesn't play. Like, they have all these big guys. I think they're going to look at point guard. You know that's what's the, missing? That's the long term. You know what's missing? Look at point guard. KG. <laughs> a true, a true well, veteran, a, a voice. Not, not his game. I'm saying a voice to be on the bench, to be in a locker room with these guys. They're all 21, 22 they do, years old. I agree with that. Well, they, that I, they do say they miss that. That is for sure. It gets to the issue with Tibbs, right? We all know he is a great coach. Nobody is saying, "Oh gosh, not, not." They're not doing well with one of the best coaches in the NBA. Wouldn't want to hire one of those. It's more about look. You're talking about a pretty significant age gap, generation yes. gap, yes. right? With a young team. One of the reasons we thought the Lakers got off to such a good start was because Luke Walton could relate to these guys in a way. I mean, Steve Kerr even thinks young and relates to his guys in sort of a younger way and a new generation kind of coach way. If they had that intermediary in KG, you Maybe. can see the Tibbs method working if there was sort of a middleman there a little bit more. You, you need that. You need his voice. You don't need to just hear your coach's voice because that, that message might not be getting through to the guys. So whereas a KG can be in there around these guys and they respect his voice more than they will the coach. I mean, it's crazy to say, but it is. Well, to quote Rick Patino and by proxy, our, I mean, Al Hassan, uh, KG's not walking I'll through walk that door anytime soon, so we'll see door. what happens.